All right, welcome everybody. Um, uh, we're so glad to be uh, speaking with you today about when students create OER, what we've learned and what's next at MIT OpenCourseWare. Um, I am uh, Kurt Newton, uh, director of MIT OpenCourseWare. Uh, I've been with OpenCourseWare since shortly after it launched in 2004 uh, and have been the director for about the last three years. And I'm uh, personally particularly passionate about working at the intersection of open education and uh, greater action on the sustainable development goals, especially through the lens of climate justice. And I am delighted to be joined by uh, my colleague from OpenCourseWare, Sarah Hansen, and two MIT students that we've had the great pleasure to be working with very closely uh, over recent months on this new program that we're going to be introducing you to called the OCW Student Corps. Um, Sarah, Ashe, Paige, would you uh, please introduce yourselves before we uh, get, get going? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah, and my role at MIT OpenCourseWare is really to make the resources more useful to educators at MIT and around the world. So I'm all about supporting faculty. Um, Ashe? Hi, uh, I'm Ashe. I'm currently a master's of engineering student at MIT, and I graduated from here last spring uh, with majors in ECS and economics. Um, really care about open education. I think I've been a user of OCW since probably the ninth grade of high school. Um, and I guess it's been really nice to get a chance to get involved with the actual team. Um, I started doing that just last year uh, when I had a bunch of assorted ideas and together with the OCW team, we formalized it into the student core initiative. Hello, my name is Paige. I'm a current sophomore in math at MIT. I started working with OCW last spring and I hope to one day be a professor. I'm very excited by the prospect of making the classroom and mathematics in general more accessible. All right. Thank you team. Um, so I'm gonna set some context uh, to start us off. Um, OCW has been around for amazingly 20 years now. And I, I don't want to assume uh, that everybody's kind of keeping up with, with what we're doing, but um, we want to talk about this work that we're doing with students and, and sharing their, their contributions to OER in the context of kind of the broader program. So just a few, a few reflections on the state, the current situation with OpenCourseWare. So on our website, we've got material from over 2,600 courses that come from the MIT classroom. Uh, it's syllabi, it's lecture notes, it's problem sets, and so on, you know, as basically as they were used in the classroom, shared freely with the world. Um, we've also, for a number of years, been sharing our videos out on YouTube, and that's become a tremendously powerful way to reach uh, people who might not otherwise find out about this content. In fact, um, we have the highest subscriber base .edu of any channel that's on YouTube. Um, we've also, for a number of years, through this program that Sarah leads, um, been sharing, in addition to what MIT has been teaching in the form of these materials, the how we teach, you know, through these interviews with instructors, instructor insights in a written form on, the, on some of the course sites, as well as the Chalk Radio podcast. And coming very soon, although I won't dwell on it at all here, we're very excited you know, to be coming out of our 20th year here with launching a new next generation platform that among other things will work much more effectively on your mobile devices. So uh, we'll talk about that at our next conference. Um, over these 20 years, OCW reaches you know, a truly global audience and uh, really quite a diverse user base. That pie chart on the right you know, tells us that, you know, we've got one foot firmly planted in kind of educational institution learners, enrolled students, and the educators who have this great multiplier effect of sharing these materials, as well as basically 50% of our users are coming just out of self-driven curiosity. And so we're always trying to think about how to serve both of these kind of unique needs. And so glad that over two thirds of our users are coming to the website from outside North America, so truly a global audience. In total, per month, we're serving 1 million website users, 2 million visits, unique visits to the website per month, and 5 million YouTube views. Um, we've also got programs to get OCW content out to places that don't have very good internet access 
through this mirror drive program and about 240 of those deployed, especially in sub-Saharan Africa and some places in Southeast Asia. Um, having this sort of global impact is truly a community achievement. And the contributions that students are making, you know, are right in there, you know, in, in, uh, in the value to our end users, right along with the core teaching materials that come from faculty, fundamentally, you know, they're kind of starting, starting this process off for us. But the faculty, the teaching assistants, we're sharing their notes from their sections, for instance, student contributions, which we'll be spending most of our time on here. And the contributions, of course, also from third party rights holders who have given us permission to share this material, all glued together by the OCW staff. You know, so right in the heart of this are students. And we want to really, you know, focus our attention on what these student contributions look like. Historically, on OCW, we've been doing, we've been sharing uh, student materials. They've been contributing to these courses from the beginning. We share many papers as sample work. We share examples of more sort of um, maybe hands-on media design and programming experiments. Um, there's a lot of things that go on in the MIT education kind of out in the field, working in communities. Uh, and so we, we put special priority on trying to give the students the ability to share what they've done for their project work. Um, you know, so that might be talking about what the field work experience was like and reports on what their, what their, uh, what their work did. And, you know, all the way through things that you can just download right off the website and use straight away. Games that you can play, for instance, from this, uh, from this course in uh, education and exploration games. In total, about 20% of OCW courses on our site have this sort of exemplary coursework, especially in the form of assignments and student projects. How do we go about this? Well, we ask the course faculty historically, you know, what students do you think have done exemplary work? And then we reach out to them and invite their participate, participation. Um, since 2008, we have been using a practice where that credit is anonymous by default and students can opt in to have their name attached to it if they'd like. What we learned kind of the hard way in those first few years is especially, you know, people writing papers around maybe culturally controversial topics, what seemed like a good thing to share, you know, when they're a student, maybe um, they were a little shy about having their name attached to it when they're out like, you know, looking for jobs and things. And so um, at this point, the vast majority of the project work that we're publishing does have student names. They're right, rightfully proud about it. Um, but also some, uh, you know, a lot of anonymous credit, especially on those papers. And we've also been sharing kind of on an ad hoc basis, student created notes when we are lucky enough to come across them. Well, so this has been tremendous for the first 20 years, but the work with Ashe and Paige that you're, we're going to hear more about, you know, really shines a bright light on all these new things that we can do. And we're so excited to be getting into now. We're, we're looking at ways to empower more students as creators of a broader set of content. We want to give them, you know, more direct access to have their perspectives included in the materials that we're sharing. All, all together creating a richer experience for learners. You know, you've got, here's what the faculty is teaching and here's what the students are, are bringing to it as well. These things all rolled up as a set of kind of goals and objectives for the OCW Student Corps. I'm gonna hand it off to my colleague, Sarah, to put some of what we're doing with the Student Corps in perspective with some of the broader movements in open education. Sure, thank you. Yeah, I didn't want to leave this conversation without touching on how I think engaging with the student core is not only going to benefit students, but will also benefit MIT educators and also educators around the world. Um, the first way is that I see it creating opportunities for faculty to engage students through open pedagogy and like to create an authentic opportunity to do this. Um, you know, as this audience 
probably all knows, one of the key aspects of open pedagogy is creating non-disposable assignments. And through Student Core, students will be working on assignments that will really go beyond the boundaries of the classroom and will enter into the open ecosystem, um, which you know is a wonderful thing. And those materials will be taken up and uh, remixed by other learners and other educators. I'm hoping, um, much like I do with faculty at MIT, to um, interview students and perhaps also faculty about what it's like to engage in open pedagogy. And then I wanna share those interviews um, at, on venues like Open Pedagogy Notebook and on our site as well. Um, next slide, please. I also think engaging with Student Core is going to allow us to offer far more inclusive OER for educators to choose from. Uh, the MIT student body is very diverse. And so the problem sets, data sets, artwork, writing, projects, et cetera, that they create are gonna reflect their interests, their cultures, their communities, their languages, which is gonna create you know, many more culturally relevant materials that educators out in the world can choose from when they're looking for OER to incorporate into their curricula for their own students. But I don't want to take up one more second. I want to turn it over to the students so you can hear directly from them. Um, Ashay, I think you're going to start. Sure, yeah. Um, so feel free to ask any questions anytime. Just, just, uh, just butt in. Um, so we've like mentioned this word student core to you a few times now, right? So let's take a step back and talk about what that is exactly and how it's formed from the beginning. So we've told you how student contributions have been a part, an important part of OCW. Um, how they've enriched the OER uh, on OCW, and uh, how the student core can create some opportunities for more of that and for open pedagogy. But uh, what exactly is this program? You know, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? And how did it all start? So at a high level, the student core is, is a systematic effort to involve students in content collection at scale. And it's a pilot program that we're running over this year at MIT. Uh, next slide, please. Or we can skip this one too. Um, so the OCW team has been thinking about student contributions and open pedagogy and all that stuff for a while. Um, but how was I seeing this as like a recent student getting involved in this and, and what was my angle on it? Um, so I've been using OCW for a long time and as a current student at MIT, I don't know, students use OCW a ton. Um, you can like look at old versions of classes and look at, you know, study from different sets of notes. You can uh, find extra homework problems to study from and um, you might want to learn a class that you didn't have time to take so you might go in there so i've been using it a ton and i guess as i was nearing graduation i was thinking like oh it'd be really nice to have um more courses on there or uh, i guess maybe lots of MIT students are lifelong learners and i was kind of sad that i was graduating soon and wanted to be able to learn anything anytime um, and that'd be great if there are many more courses on ocw than there are i mean there are a lot but there could be much more um, you know, what if I wanted to pick up like a biology major sometime? Um, and so what I was thinking about is like, yeah, like uh, what if our goal is to, you know, get every single MIT course on OCW, like an almost perfect equivalent of that. And, you know, why isn't that happening? Um, and so I was thinking about that over my junior and senior year. And uh, uh, next slide, please. So I came, kind of came across two observations. Um, after talking to a lot of professors, the first was that uh, lots of faculty are kind of on the border of being too busy and kind of indifferent about putting content up, right? So they do a lot of that work about polishing content to get put on OCW. And um, if they're busy with their research, maybe they can't find that time to do some of that polishing. Um, it's not that they don't want to put it up there. Um, and secondly, a lot of students already do a lot of content collection work. So when we think about what kind of content might go up for a class in OCW, maybe it's like a set of lecture notes. Um, or some like homework solutions or something and students are creating that content, right? So uh, um, if a professor needs to polish some of that content up, there's a huge bank of you know, resources to use to do, to, to do that. So you know, they um, might wanna adjust their lecture notes slightly and there are a ton of students who took excellent lecture notes actually that maybe they could pull some stuff from or maybe they want to rewrite a piece of solution to explain something slightly differently. But a lot of students have created a ton of solutions for that already. Each person has answered that problem in different ways. And so there's a lot of content that can be used. And uh, you know, I guess an observation is let's use more of that content or let's do that at scale. 
Um, uh, next slide, please. Or maybe you can skip two. So just to give an example of what some student work looks like. So, or some, maybe some background first. Um, lots of students are taking notes in lecture, right? Uh, you know, it's how you study, it's how you learn. Um, and just to give an example, in, in the math major, lots of students take notes in, uh, in LaTeX, uh, like live LaTeX notes in class, and they're excellent notes. So this is just one example from a student, Andrew Lin. Um, Kurt can go to uh, his site just to give an example. We can scroll through just to get a sense of what it's like. So he publishes these online, you know, anyone can read them. And it really just reads like a textbook. Like it's almost like a substitute for going to class. Um, you know, you have definitions, you have examples, you have the theorems, you have the proofs, and it, it does read quite nicely. Um, and so this material is really, really high quality. And so it's not like this is the average, um, you know, a lot of notes and I know it's definitely are way, way more rough, but there's a lot of this out there. And even a rough set of notes can be very useful. Um, so uh, as we move on to the next slide, a very natural question after seeing this is, you know, can students help out more and help push faculty over that edge? Can they nudge faculty a little bit or help them out in some way such that we can get way more content up? Um, so what incentives exist for students? Uh, let's just revisit this for a second. So when we think about how we might implement this, how we might get more students to, or you know, how we might get more students to do this, uh, Kurt, next slide, please. Um, I guess we can, you know, obviously we can probably pay them. So we can hire students, we can offer paid opportunities. Uh, but this sort of thing offers a lot of other things for the students. So it helps them build their, their resumes. Um, it looks really good if you have TA applications or other things to say that you helped create content for a class like this. Like it does take a lot of work and it really demonstrates a lot of understanding. So it does look good. Um, anytime you create this stuff and work on it and polish it, you learn a lot too. And it acts, it's just acts as studying. So you can study for a class through writing a nice set of lecture notes. Um, and finally, a lot of people actually care about giving back to OCW. So the students we hired, we asked them about their motivations. And a lot of people talked about how they use OCW a lot and they're just passionate about the teaching materials and would love to, um, you know, to help work on them. And for faculty, so you know, what do faculty think about when they want to put something up? So of course they care about teaching and sharing knowledge. I mean, that's a big part of what they do. Um, also, uh, they can build their reputation on there. Uh, I guess there are a lot of like famous MIT professors that have put stuff online, like Professor Bill String, like a lot of people have taken his linear algebra course and people know him because of that for many reasons. Um, and I guess also it is, uh, you can prepare for your in-person teaching by creating content for OCW. So just having to think really hard about, um, you know, how to explain this and all that. If you prepare for the year, it, it acts as preparation for the classroom. Uh, next slide, please. So when we think about, hey, let's, let's get students to collect a bunch of stuff so we can put it on OCW and people can learn from it. Um, the next question is, what do we collect, right? Uh, and this is, this is just the way I see it. This is how I've broken it down, but there are other ways to break it down. This isn't like the right way to break it down. Um, but I kind of see like traditional aspects of courses and kind of non-traditional. So uh, MIT is a big STEM school. So we have a lot of like engineering classes and math classes that have a lot of the things on the, in the left column. So a lot of lectures, a lot of recitations and homeworks and homework solutions. Like that's kind of what forms the class. So when we think about what we might collect, we'll kind of want the video associated with lecture ideally, or, you know, or the set of lecture notes. Recitation at MIT is basically the teaching assistants going through some example problems or just covering content again. Um, so that's useful to collect. And then of course, homework and homework solutions. So anytime you wanna learn something, I guess you can't really learn it unless you do the work. Um, and so it's really nice to have solutions up for a thing. So anyone on OCW can check their work because they don't have a TA to you know, go back and forth with. So that's really nice to have. And so examples of courses in the left column are you know, machine learning from course six, maybe functional analysis from, or I should say computer science department, uh, functional analysis from the math department and microeconomics from the econ department. Um, then there are other courses with very, very different types of material and you know, how we go about collecting it might be very different. So uh, maybe let's take humanities courses that are very discussion-based. And so we might have a lot of readings, we might have discussion prompts, essay prompts, project prompts. Um, this is probably somewhere where we can do a lot of example, collect a lot of example work. And so some examples here are media studies, uh, urban design, gender and technology. Um, yeah, next slide, please. And so, of course, we want to collect all that core content. I guess that's like what you really need to learn the main stuff. 
But there's all sorts of other stuff we can collect that can really round out the OER experience. So we can collect tips for other students, reflections and experiences, um, questions students ask and their answers, common mistakes on the homework, and probably a lot, lot more stuff. And so all this stuff is so useful to have, uh, to learn from. Um, and you get a lot of this in person, but you don't get as much of this online traditionally. So this is a lot of stuff we can, we're also looking to uh, collect in this uh, student core pilot. Uh, next slide, please. So I thought the best way to kind of go through our different ideas is to just talk about concretely what we're doing this semester. It's just kind of easier. So we're piloting five courses. And I'm just gonna go through and talk about what we're doing concretely for each of these courses. So for these two math courses, Algebra 1 and Fourier Analysis, we have multiple students collaborating together on creating a set of lecture notes. So what are they doing? They're each taking their own set of lecture notes in class as they would normally. And then after class, they are working together to merge these set of notes into one set of notes. So they do maybe like one to two hours of polishing those notes up. And one thing we're asking them to do is think a lot about uh, how to write these notes such that they fit the OCW audience. And so we don't wanna skip any steps. We really wanna make it as understandable as possible. Um, and this is one example of something we're doing kind of beyond just the normal stuff students do in the classroom, right? We wanna polish it up in a way that's fit for the OCW audience. Um, and then also we want them to make them as standalone as possible. So we'd love it, it would love for someone to be able to read these set of lecture notes and to kind of get everything they would have gotten in lecture. So we're asking the students to write down everything that's written on the board, but also things like what the professor said, you know, capturing those transitions, those explanations, that context. Um, and we're also asking them to compile questions and answers from students. Uh, in market design, we're having some students collaborate on creating a set of comprehensive homework solutions. So I mentioned this earlier, um, the teaching assistant, like the TA solutions or the staff solutions offer like one way of solving the problem. They don't always necessarily detail out all the ways of solving the problem, but that can be really helpful to see, um, especially if students have like different ways of solving and they wanna know if their way was correct. So that's one of the things they're doing. So uh, these students are looking at all, all their solutions and the staff solution. And by looking at all of these together, um, making one set of solutions that incorporates all these different things from these different solutions. Um, and another thing we're emphasizing here is, again, like not skipping steps because people learning on OCW don't have a TA. If they don't understand some step, they'll just get stuck. So we really want to minimize the probability someone gets stuck. And that, and this is where some of that extra work comes in that these students have to do. Like, how do I write this in such a way that it can make sense to anybody? Um, and so maybe they'll like define some more terms or something. So maybe they'll give some more examples. So lots of interesting things to try there. Um, in econometrics, we're trying this uh, very interesting thing. So OCW does a lot of recordings for classes, right? And puts the video recordings up, but they can be very expensive and that can prevent scaling up this program. So we're exploring creative ways to record a class. And so this is very, very like experimental, but the idea is instead of having like a video recording, what if we record audio and we ask a student to take uh, notes on their iPad and screen record the iPad. And then what we can do is like in post, we can take the audio, the screen recorded lecture uh, video and the feed of the lecture slides and create a lecture video uh, out of that stuff. And um, you know, it's very cheap to do in comparison to the whole lecture video with all the camera set up because audio is very cheap to record. Um, so that's interesting. We'll see how, how that goes. Um, and then they're also you know, working on lecture recitation notes. And in, uh, in intro to media studies, uh, that's a very interesting class. The professor is very willing to experiment a lot of things. So there, he already has the students rotate who takes notes each class. So that's interesting. And um, so we can collect that. We can collect reading responses and essays. But the main thing we're thinking about here is, you know, if you're on OCW and you want to take some humanities discussion-based course, how do you do that? Do you just read, you know, what if we had a video and that captured everything that was said in discussion and you just watch that? Like that doesn't really... Uh, that doesn't give you the classic, like the real experience, right? Just listening to something, what other people came up with isn't what these classes are like. You really need to be part of the discussion and like be thinking and be talking. And so it's a challenge for how, how do we kind of replicate these courses on OCW? And so one idea is maybe we don't, right? Maybe we make some interactive version of them on edX or something. And then what we need to solve here is how do we make it very efficient to instantiate that edX version of the class, right? I don't want to manually go in and enter every single sub 
you know, whatever question. And, but what if we can have students collect something in some format that we can automate and it just, you know, boom, creates that edX class and, and then we don't have to do too much work to polish it up once it's on edX and people can just take that and it's the interactive version. Um, uh, next slide, please. So there are a ton of challenges to all this. There are a ton of logistics that we're not gonna go into today, um, but here are just some of them. Uh, so, you know, we wanna put homework solutions up, but a lot of classes reuse homework, so we can't always put the solutions up. And, and for all of these, there are like ways around this. There are kind of ideas to counter this, but we won't go into too many of those now. Um, if we wanna put lecture notes up, sometimes professors have a plan to create a textbook and that prevents that. Um, costs of video recording precludes recording every class. Um, you know, we have to get approvals from students to film them, so that prevents us from sharing videos sometimes. So especially with all the amazing content from last year, right? All the classes are recorded, but we can't just immediately put that up online. There's some more work that has to be done. Um, and then quality controls. This is an interesting one. So we're having students do all this work, but maybe there are mistakes in there, right? So before we just put that up online, we need to vet that somehow. So how do we do that? If the professor doesn't have time, maybe they just want to do one pass. How do we do it? So one idea there is we have students work together and do some peer review. Um, but there are many more. And so uh, just recapping now, uh, next slide, please. There's kind of three motivations for this. I've kind of talked a lot about this efficiency one. Um, this is the main thing I think about. Um, so, you know, what does efficiency mean? It's like, if we want to collect all this content for OCW, students are a really nice way to do that. Um, frankly, they're cheap to hire, right? I mean, in the end, you need, you need to scale and you need to make it cost effective. But students can do this stuff really well because they're learning all this stuff anyways. They, they know what they don't understand. And so students working together with faculty and TAs is really what we want to create. Um, and so they're perfectly poised to do this. And uh, working with them is very efficient. Um, the second motivation is insights. So working with students, students offer lots of insights uh, about how to do things on OCW. So as OCW thinks about like which professors to talk to and which classes to put up, like students uh, are on the ground, they're taking the classes, they have a really good idea of which professors are amenable to working with OCW and which classes might be good or uh, all sorts of stuff. And they have all these ideas. And so we wanna start some conversation with, this, with the students and have some ongoing conversation. So one idea is maybe we'll um, have a few students per major and meet, meet with them uh, you know, twice per semester and hear lots of amazing feedback and have this discussion going back and forth. Um, so that's something we're, we're starting up. And the third motivation for this program is enrichment. So Kurt and Sarah talked about this uh, in the context of open pedagogy and all these other extra pieces of content we can create for these courses that really enriches the content on OCW. So finally, what our vision is as we move to the next slide, we really wanna be able to take any class I think from MIT and instantiate it on OCW in the best way possible. And would love to see an ethos of creation and sharing as a core value, an integral part of the culture of these academic community. Um, MIT has a lot of strong cultures here and there. And I guess like as a new student, I wanna to come to campus and recognize this like thing, like, oh, people make this content and share it as, as something that happens. Um, and so would love for content creation opportunities to be embedded and like be the norm in all classes or as many classes as possible. And for students to be aware of these opportunities from day one. So, you know, again, like I come at here as a new student and I know, hey, I can spend some extra time and make some nice content for this class and it can get put up and other people can use that and benefit from it. And that whole thing can be a learning opportunity for me. Um, and so through this, I guess also a nice side, side benefit is that OCW course offerings would get updated on some regular schedule, which is really nice. And there are all these interesting opportunities for things like community editable, or commentable notes. So, you know, as students work together on content, we can leverage everyone's insights and ideas to polish up a set of notes. Um, and even like the public community. So uh, some professors actually, one of the classes I'm taking now, um, the professor has a public textbook where anyone, you know, anyone in the world can just make comments about changes and things like that. And he's been incorporating a lot of those changes. And so creating some structure and format for that uh, is part of this. And so in the end, we want to figure out some system and workflow to support all of these things and make it efficient and kind of automate some parts of it. So that's a lot of what we're figuring out this year. Uh, sorry, that was a lot. And I talked very fast, but I will now hand it over to Paige. Hello, uh, my name is Paige. Uh, I'm going to 
I just wanted to provide some insight as a current undergraduate working with the Student Corps project, but also with OCW in general. Um, I'll start off with how I got into working with OCW. So I joined in spring 2021 after I very quickly realized that there aren't that many materials for college classes and college class learning online. Now, granted, I had this preconceived notion going into college that at a certain point, the only things that could help me were the professor, TAs, and material like books alone. Um, but the thing that was most interesting about that was through my fall semester and through the COVID-19 era, I very quickly realized this didn't need to be the case. Through being in an environment online, professors made huge efforts to be accessible and accommodating to students, recording lectures, making their lecture notes available, and having more office hours probably than normal to just help contribute to student learning. And the thing that's so much so frustrating about that is realizing that we have all this content from those lectures, but they aren't being able to benefit anyone other than those in those classrooms. And in fact, aren't being used to benefit other MIT students in future generations of those classes. And so I was having these conversa conversations in spring 2021 with one of my professors and I told them, there's this introductory math course called Real Analysis that there are no videos for. It's a very common class to take as a math major, but it's just slightly beyond calculus and common math courses that there isn't too much available. And in talking to him, he actually said that he had those recordings and those act files available. And through which we started the process of starting to upload those to OCW with the help of OCW staff and contacting Kurt. And so it's been very rewarding to see that sort of pay off, as well as to know that these materials are, as she was saying, being made efficiently, efficiently in what would, one would argue is a very difficult time in our lives, but nonetheless is still being made. And so while the experience of the pandemic has been terrible, I equally think that the timing of the pandemic has led us to see the full potential of something like the student course in realizing that this material can be made efficiently, both by professors and by students. In that same course, Andrew Lynn made notes for those, and now those are also going on OCW. So realizing that these materials can be made efficiently has been very rewarding and very inspiring for what's to come with the student core. Um, and through this one professor, they're gonna have impacts on generations to come. They're making the in-person classroom more accessible. They're making future generations of this course more accessible and providing as many resources as possible that students may need or want to learn better, which I think is very indicative of our current generation. Our generation of students grew up with resources like Khan Academy. And I'm very hopeful that in the future, we can extend that further to college education, both in the classroom and around the world. So I'm very hopeful for what's to come. Thank you. So we'll now move into a Q&A session. If anyone has any questions they'd like to talk about. Yeah, please, uh, please uh, drop in the chat anything that you're wondering about, any questions. Um, while we're waiting, can I, can I ask a question of, uh, of uh, Paige and Ashe? Um, uh, you know, we're, we're hearing sort of conversation more broadly around the, the, the OER world about how to build more student agency, you know, into, into our OER, you know, um, you know, where, where are the places that you see that, you know, maybe pick one place that you're most excited about where you can, you know, you see the opportunity to like have an idea and run with it through this structure. Um, in particular for the classroom, I think it's been very interesting. I've had a lot of conversations with current students in classrooms about this idea of sharing notes and making them available because students are taking these notes. They are making great notes for themselves. And it's a question of, are you willing, if you are, to share those with others? And a lot of students have been very open to running, like you said, running wild with that idea and continuing that process like Andrew Lynn. Yeah, nice. It's like building community. You're able to like, Put that energy out. Yeah. How about you, Ashe? You yeah. Uh, I'm resonating with what Paige said. So uh, I think if we create some structures to really um, minimize the amount of work a student has to do to share some of what they've been thinking, right? So, like, students form all these different study groups, and different study groups kind of discover different things or discover different examples of or different ways to think about things. And so, how do you make it really easy for these study groups to kind of pull some of what they're thinking together into one thing that can contain all those you know, ideas or all that content? Um, and yeah, so I think that's one way lots of people would contribute in small ways. And then you might have some students who contribute a lot in 
kind of their individual ways. So that's kind of students like Andrew Lynn who do a lot of their own stuff. Okay, great. I see a question, yeah, from uh, Chin. I'm not sure I'm mm -hmm. pronouncing right. Yeah, so uh, let's see. So the whole recruitment thing has been quite interesting. Um, we created this uh, survey and um, it has a, a variety of questions in there. Um, we just tell students explicitly what they're gonna get, right? So we tell them uh, they're gonna get paid for this. We tell them their hour, hourly rate and um, we tell them it'll help them learn. Uh, and we tell them that their name can be attached to this when it goes in OCW. Um, and we, sent, we just sent that out to the class and uh, waited for responses. And so in some classes, we only got like one or two responses. In some classes, we got 10 responses, right? Out of a 30 person class. So it does vary. Um, I think one thing I'd say is a lot of students are motivated in general. I think right, like people want to do well in their classes. And uh, again, like a lot of this content they do already. And so doing a little like one or two hours of work extra per lecture isn't that much. Um, and so they're like, hey, I'm making this anyways. Maybe I'll spend one hour and get paid for something that's going to help me study anyways. Um, I think, yeah, that's, that's mostly what I see. Uh, maybe Kurt can talk about the funding question. Uh, so uh, we are taking inspiration from the, you know, the minimum fifteen dollar minimum wage push, and uh, that's what we're that's what we're using. So I think one thing I should also say is, uh, so there's a program at MIT uh, for doing research with professors that's very kind of embedded in, in the curriculum. Um, so lots of students do research and they get paid, I think, $13.50 for that research. So this is paying more than that. And so that's also like, things are relative for students often, right? And yeah, I, think, oh, I think Zachariah was asking like where the funding itself is coming from. Oh, okay. I was jumping on civil there. Um, yeah, Zachariah, that's, that's an important question. Um, so we recognize that MIT is a, um, a elite endowment <laughs> sort of class institution. And we've been particularly lucky uh, to have received a gift recently from a donor um, named John Gruber that we're putting to use on this, um, uh, on this program. Uh, John's been a supporter of op open courseware for many years, and uh, um, you know we got a recent gift from him to support some of these things we're doing for our next generation program and platform. And in particular, for the platform we're using this to uh, to fund uh, supportive students right now. And I I think it's also good to add that um, a lot of these things can be done through like volunteer opportunities and or integrating it with the class itself. So there, and there's a precedent for some of this. So for example, a lot of classes at MIT actually have scribing lecture as a part of the class. And I have taken, I think two or three classes like that. So each, each student will be required to take lecture notes, like really nice formal lecture notes for one of the 24 lectures. Um, and that's part of your grade. And so, right, that's a, um, there's a good reason to ask students to do that because I think that process of taking nice lecture notes makes you learn a lot. Um, and so it's kind of reasonable to ask in a class and also that generates some of this content, right? So there are a lot of ways to generate this content as part of a class without making, making it separate and then having to pay students to do it. Looks like we're what, one minute away from the session end? Is that right, Lindsay? Um, Sarah, any, any other questions? Um, I guess I'm curious about um, the participants and you know, what takeaways they're taking away or what questions it raises for them or um, how they envision this happening at their site. Um, and we only have a minute left, but I would love to hear some of that or just read some in the chat. Great. And um, let's see. Shay said there's, ah, look at this. Uh, I'm going to share my screen real quickly. And, um, Ashay, could you drop that link into the chat for people? Uh, yes, give me one moment. Yeah. Yeah, so 
we really think that there's a ton to brainstorm here and that many other people may have lots of ideas, maybe doing similar things. So we'd love to set up a follow-up discussion if that could be helpful for all of us. Um, putting this link into the chat where you can enter your email if you want to be in the loop about something we'll schedule sometime. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving these questions that are starting to come in here from uh, Michelle about um, student misunderstanding and questions, you know, kind of demystifying, <laughs> you know, the fear of showing confusion. Uh, that's really, really a powerful thing. And uh, um, grading student submissions. Anybody got a last minute thought on that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. I guess we're Thank out you. of time. Uh, on behalf of Sarah Ashe Page, I uh, thank you for uh, for joining us here. And uh, yeah, please be in touch with us through the forum. Uh, we uh, are very excited about what we're starting to get into here. So thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Kurt, um, would you be able to end the recording, please? Sure. I have the power, huh? Yeah. Um, can you save the 